You're watching BBN Tonight on your official UK sports station, LEX 18. Presented by Central Bank, the official bank of UK athletics. Welcome back to BBN Tonight. Now that Kentucky is 5-0, we're starting to get some outside attention in the college football world. That's right, and in a pretty big way, SEC Network is in town for the game, and we got to talk to Roman Harper ahead of the matchup. Well, Roman, let's just jump right into it. What should we expect from this weekend's Kentucky LSU game? Well, I expect Kentucky's defense to continue on this hot roll that they're playing on. LSU's offensive struggle, especially when it comes to running the football. And I'm expecting Kentucky's linebackers really play a factor in the, in the passing game as well. Knowing that LSU loves doing slant routes, that's all in the linebackers area. Kentucky's defense does a great job of keeping, keeping everything in front of them secondary-wise and allowing their linebackers to make a lot of those plays. So the linebackers of Kentucky should play a high, high role in the decision what's going on this week, tomorrow. Now, as you did mention, we know LSU has specifically struggled in the run game and their passing defense hasn't been great, but what are their strengths? Well, you know, it's their strength is their athleticism. They are still the LSU Tigers. They recruit extremely well. Ed Odron has a very, very talented roster. They are just not playing together as a group or as a team. And it's really showing on Saturdays. They're missing tackles. They did not play together. They're blowing coverages. And it's not because they don't have the guys that can cover. It's because they're just not, you know, they're just losing the guys in coverage and then they're in secondary. So they have to figure those things out. And if they do, woe is me to that team whenever, on whatever Saturday it is that they figure what they're doing out correctly on defense. Yeah, it kind of leads me into this because the <laughs> roster is full of NFL talent. Is that a reason to overlook LSU's recent struggles and be ready for a different LSU team to show up on game day? Well, you better be ready if you're Kentucky. Kentucky has literally played to the talent level of whatever team that they're playing all year long, besides the very first game when they look like the best, one of the best teams in all of the SEC. You look at what they did against Tennessee Chattanooga. It took them to get a pick six to really kind of seal that game. Then you got Florida. They did not play well offensively, but Florida luckily had so many penalties and they and Kentucky made just enough plays, which I like. That's what I love so much about Kentucky is that the best teams always find ways to win, no matter whatever fashion it is. The first game they threw the ball. The second game when they had a really big victory versus Missouri, they were able to run the ball and get that going. And then from there, they kind of just pieced it together and done whatever they can to win a game. So I like that Kentucky has multiple outs and winning, but – who are they playing against? They have to at some point say, we need to play against the competition and the person that's in the mirror. We have our own standards in which we need to play every week. And if we do that, we don't have to worry about the team we're playing. It's all about ourselves. We have to play against ourselves every week. Both teams enter the game minus key defensive players. LSU without cornerback Derek Stingley and safety major Burns. Kentucky without nose guard Marquand McCall. How much impact will it have on the game having these key pieces of the defense out? Well, I, I think it plays a, a – you lose more with LSU because these are secondary players, and we all know Kentucky has taken advantage of deep throws to Wando Robinson. But they can run the ball extremely well with Chris Rodriguez and being able to play action pass off of that, that's one thing. But you don't miss Manuel front if you are Kentucky because LSU can't even run the ball. They didn't even get 30 yards versus Auburn. You're better than Auburn, so don't worry about that. Kentucky, it's all about the passing lanes and making sure your linebackers are ready because you look up, Max Johnson may hit you in the hands with one of these throws. Where does Kentucky need to succeed in order to shut down LSU, walk out of Kroger Field, 6-0 and for the first time since 1950? They have to pick it up offensively. They have got to score. They have got to continue to build on that side of the ball. I know they showed flashes of greatness early, but since they have not been able to hit the deep shots, can you complete just a simple second and seven? Can you be efficient in the third and five, third to seven range? Because that's where you're going to end up a lot of times. And Will Levis and that offense have to be able to move the chains and keep your defense off the field. You don't want your defense on the field all game long. That is when it takes something. It only takes one bad play. And now you're down seven or you're down 14. And now you're having to press. And now you have to complete passes and not lean on the run game, which is really what's worked for you. All right, Roman, who's your pick? And can you give us a score prediction? Oh, man. Uh, I have, this is the only game I have not actually decided because I want everything in my heart says Kentucky's going to win the game. But it's something about Edo with his back to against the wall and Kentucky's playing down to the, you know what, for you guys, Kentucky's going to win the game. <laughs> Let me just cut to it. <laughs> Kentucky's going to win the game. I, I think it's around 24 to 21, 24 to 17. 
<laughs> Way to put the pressure on him right That's there. That's right. Make, I didn't, I didn't like the hesitation. <laughs> All right, Roman and the rest of the SEC Nation crew will be on campus tomorrow at the library for their show starting at 10 a.m. So head on over for that. That's Laura Rutledge, Tim Tebow, Paul Feinbaum, all in the same spot. Count us in. You're watching BBN tonight. More right after this.